a couple things. Are, can we, are, we, are we on time? Are we cool? Yeah. Is it 11? 59. Okay, good. So the stragglers get to miss out on the really cool stuff. Um, so I made Julia promise. So everybody by now knows our Palmdella office is opening. Yeah. 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 We have our really cool, what's it called? Antelope Valley Real Estate Professionals Group, kind of like the SF San Fernando Valley one. So Julia wants everybody to take out their phones and add three agents to that group. Because we only have how many in that group? Um, 400 now. And how many do we have in San Fernando Valley? 1,500. 1,500. So it's kind of cool if you guys ever, who, who works Palm Dollar would consider it? Mm -hmm. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. What's up, brother? So here's the reality. It's kind of cool to be able to post in a Facebook group and say, hey, I'm looking for a listing not yet on the market for my buyer, and you can find one. So it's, yes, we want to build our office and make yeah, lots of new yeah, friends for you. Really. But the reality is networking groups are super powerful. I mean, we, every time I go to AG with Billy, I find two or three listings out on the market yet. I'm like, dude, I'm like, this is a separate MLS. It's cool. I mean, again, how many people in this room have a listing coming up in the next 30 days that's not in the MLS? Four of us. Okay, we need to recruit. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh All right. But for real, I mean, those four listings could change somebody's career, for real. Yeah. Like, if I'm looking for that one particular house, that could be a difference in my career, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. yep. An extra 10 grand or 12 grand or whatever that yeah. we make off commissions these days, it's a lot of money. Yeah? Yep. Okay. All right, did you guys add some people? Yep. Julie would really appreciate that. Because the SP-153 MLS. Yeah. And I just want to make sure, too, I've got you guys all added. Right. That's the most important part. Okay. What group? In all of our groups. San Fernando? Fernando? No, no, the Antelope Valley. Antelope Valley. Where is oh, oh, I guess we're missing that. All right, cool. Um, so I got up this morning, and what? I was like, I totally wonder what we're training on today. <laughs> so I went I back. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. So that was weird. But we went, I went back and watched Julie's video, and she said we were going to talk about what does an agent's day look like. Now, I, it's one of my favorite things to talk about. It's not an hour-long class, but it, it could be, right? And then I was going through presentations, and I said, oh, wow, here's a little prioritization thing for maybe the one person that's kind of new here we can really focus on. And then we get here and there's like 10 new people. So I don't know how Julie did that in her mind, but it worked out perfect <laughs> for today. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a lot of people here that could use a little bit of a, a, little bit of a guidance, I'd say. Um, so how many of you guys are listening to realestatemarketingshow.com, our podcast? Raise your hand. Okay. Martha, will you stand up? Now that is the girl that puts that thing together, every bit of it. Give her Yay, a hand. Martha! So, so she's been doing this a long time. She's done amazing things for us. Um, and I've never been able to meet her until right now. So I'm still like going, oh my God, that's so cool. I mean, we rely on her so much and she's actually sitting in this room. So I thought I'd point her out. Um, that reminds me, if you guys, sometimes it's hard for me to come up with podcast ideas. And if you say, I'd really like to learn about this. I'd really like to drive to Vegas in a couple weeks and learn about this. Tell me what that is because Sometimes we just don't know. Sometimes I'm not in tune exactly with what everybody needs. But what we're trying to make is what we call evergreen files, where they last for a long time, to where you could listen to them two years from now and they're still relevant. Right? So if there's every little things that you that you want to go through that go through them, obviously first, and don't ask for what's already there, but we can go from there. Um, so let's talk about prioritization. In the last couple weeks, did we catch everything? Do we need to do any more housekeeping before we get too deep? All right, cool. Um, in the last couple of weeks, Johnny, can you read that to me? You're always good at reading. <clears throat> overwhelmed? Yeah. When you do nothing, you feel overwhelmed and powerless. But when you get involved, you feel the sense of hope and accomplishment that comes from knowing you are working towards making things better. <laughs> See why I have them read? <laughs> so, so it wrong, it's been more and more overwhelming for me to know how many people in our company are overwhelmed. It's, and it might be experience, it might be, um, somebody told me the other day, you have the ability to multitask like no other. Like in my mind, I'm doing three or four things at all, at all times, so I get a lot done and I'm not as overwhelmed. But now I'm overwhelmed that you're overwhelmed and I wanna stop, the, stop you from being overwhelmed. Um, 
So let's talk about your why. And this is the way I start this class every time is we all hear that. And it kind of is cliche these days, right? What's mm -hmm. your why? And I said, what is another word for what's our why? What's our passion? What's our future? This, what's our that? And I go, you know what? Why sugarcoat it? It is what it is. And in real estate sometimes, and, and I wish I was who I was talking to yesterday, the day before, <clears throat> I was talking to a gentleman that, like me, for a long time didn't know his why. And, and I just listened and I was talking about it and, and, and I was going, man, until you have figured something out, it's hard because what's going to make you go do an open house on a Sunday if you don't really have a why? Mm. I mean, I, I'll quickly guess why, beach, camping, Hawaii, boom. <laughs> Way easier to do that than door knocking, right? Oh, yeah. So we have to have some little boost to drive us. Like, like I look at Amanda over here, we always talk about this big DCB boat she wants, right? And, mm -hmm. and, until, and until she's really got it figured out, that's all the only way I can get through to her right now. Her <laughs> DCB boat, her DCB boat. Because <laughs> that's a cool thing to have, yeah. right? It's, it's definitely, it's a dream and a passion of her and her husband's. And so that's what I know. And now we're starting to talk about family and kids and you know growing up. And that's all boring, so I'll keep talking about her boat. He definitely doesn't want me to talk about kids. <laughs> They're totally overrated. Oh, 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 just kidding. Let's <laughs> forget he's in the room. I love you, baby. <laughs> that was funny. Is my face more red? Sorry, Andy. Matches your shirt. Poor Andy. <laughs> so why are we sitting here today? Right? There's, there's a bunch of different reasons. Uh, we have a new team being trained. We have some agents that don't have their license yet that are going, I don't know, is, is real estate something that I want to do when I grow up or, or switch a career? And some of us are sitting here and we're selling one or two houses a month, but we're really passionate and serious about going to the next level, right? I mean, does anybody want to share why they're here? And maybe I can help focus in on some of the stuff. Is there anybody going, I'd really like to learn this today because we have time for that. Or I'd really like to, I, I, this is the change I want to make in my career. Yes. Yeah, well, my husband and I have been feeling really <coughs> stalled, so I would like to know how to kind of get back on track. Boost? A, yeah, boost, boost our business. Right. Yeah. That's another that's class that we should be doing. Right. Yeah. Too, that's a fun one. That's very, very motivating. Anybody else feel like they need a boost? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's, and I appreciate the honesty because that was more than half of you guys. And usually it's like, uh, you know, like, like our coach Hellickson says, it doesn't matter what I ask, you're not going to raise your hand, then everybody raises their hand. <laughs> it's freaking hard to do this. Like, you're trying to, you're trying to like really figure it out. And uh, one of my mentors always told me, uh, we have to give energy to receive it, right? So the more energy you give me, the more I can give you, and we can really nail things out. If you're going to waste an hour and a half of your day, you might as well do it the right way. Mm -hmm. All right, so why are we here today? What is it you want? That's pretty, um, pretty obvious. Now, Dean Graciosi, I never can say his name right, is a, a guy I'm kind of following now, right? Like Gary Vee, one of those kind of guys, pretty, pretty motivational. And I, as I study him, I go back over the years and I watch this guy and I go, well, him and Gary Vee, right? I go, how in the world did these twerpy, nerdy dudes come out of nowhere, motivate millions and be millionaires? Mm -hmm. So that fascinates me. Right? You could tell they weren't always who they were. Something happened. They found their why, let's say. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, and, I, and I'll play the video that we played again, uh, that we played last time, because it, I think it's important to, to watch this thing. He's, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty deep, I guess, the words would be. I'm trying to... I'll start it where it gets interesting. If I had glasses on. Oh, perfect. This one. Or that. Help! her up, baby! Why you're really doing this? Now, why are you watching this blog today? Why are you? Did you buy my book? Or you're part of the Success Academy? Or gone to my live events? Boots on the ground? Maybe you went to Vegas? Why did you do all that? Well, it's bigger. If I just say, do you want to make more money? Yeah, of course. Do you want financial freedom? Yeah, of course. But I promise you, it's much deeper. You know, when I'm on stage and there's hundreds of people in the audience, um, I'll say, why are you here for money? And everybody raises their hand. That's kind of it. But it's much deeper. When I bring someone up on stage 
And set, it's called Seven Levels Deep because you ask the same question seven times. Now, I'm going to attach a link below where you can find the form where you can go through it. But basically, it's like this. If I said to you, why are you here? And you said, I want to make more money. Then you ask the why again with the answer. So I'd say, then why do you want to make more money? Well, I want to make money because I want, I want to live life on my terms. Great. So you, when I asked you why first, you said you want to make more money. When I asked you why more money, you said because you want to live life on your terms. Why do you want to live life on your terms? Do you see how that progression goes? When you ask the why with the previous answer seven times, it actually gets difficult, the top three. You start thinking, well, I thought I answered this. But then all of a sudden you start reaching deep inside and you start getting feelings. I, Most everybody I've ever done this with has gotten emotional. I cried the first time. When I hired this consultant, I kept asking him, well, show me how it works. He goes, no, I just want to do it with you. So he asked me, why do I want more results for my students? And that, that's why I hired him. And I said, well, because I want a business based on solid foundation. I want to be the only real guy in this business. The first three or four were kind of superficial. I didn't realize it. When I narrowed, when I got drilled deep, let me tell you what my top three reasons are that I've worked so hard since I've been 17 years old, that I have that I have this driving force to do more, to overcome my obstacles, to be a better human being, to be a better teacher to you. Why do I do all this, right? I have kids now. You would think now it's the kids, right? But what if, I was doing this before I had kids. When I got my why, I'll tell you, my top couple were I never wanted to go backwards. That was number three, I think. I never wanted to go backwards because I hated being a broke kid. Hated it more than anything. When you struggle about the bills and that's everything, there's fights in the family. I, I know how it all goes. Can't do certain things. Can't pay medical bills. I never want to go backwards. I like being in control. Uh, the second one was I never want my kids to live the life I had and worry about money, wear hand-me-downs and, and, you know, and struggle and money being such a big part of it. And, you know, if they want to go to college, I want them to go wherever they want. I want them to feel secure. I don't want them spoiled, but I want them to be bulletproof for any economy and any future that I don't know about when I'm dead and gone. So that was number two for me. That's strong wise. Number one for me was, and I couldn't believe it because I had never thought through this, is because by the time I was 20, I had moved 19 times. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel in control as a kid. My parents were married four times each. And mm -hmm. it was different stepbrothers, different stepfather, different stepmother, this school, that school. I'd make friends and move, make friends, move. And you know, as a kid, man, you just feel so out of control. When I really dug down, I work so damn hard because I want to be in control. No one to tell me what to do, how to do it, when to do it. And that kind of rolled over is I don't want a boss. I don't want somebody that I probably feel smarter than telling me how to do things. I want to be in control. I'm not a control freak. I don't drive my staff nuts, hopefully, but I want to be in control. And when you figure out what your why is, it's so much bigger than just money that it'll help you overcome all the obstacles, the real estate agent that tells you no, the deal that you lost, the negative people in your life, all these outside influences, you start building this wall. So what I'd love every single one of you to do is do the seven levels deep. Find out your reasons why. Again, if you've done it, do it again. If you haven't done it, get the form before. Remember, ask the questions with the why, with the previous answer, the top three get tough. Go deep. If you could do it with somebody else, that's amazing. Do it back and forth with each other. Let the emotions out. Figure out your why. Become absolutely bulletproof. Because all I know is we got the best wisdom in the world. We got the greatest market in the world to make money. And if you miss it, you're going to kick yourself in the butt. So find the reason why and let's rock it. I'm Dean Graziosi. I'll talk to you next week. Mm. Cool, huh? Mm -hmm. So if you guys don't know, he teaches us or anybody in the public how to invest in real estate. So if you don't think you're a really savvy real estate investor and you want to be motivated or boosted, perfect guy to pay attention to. Um, highly recommend him. So you know how he talked about also his mentor? He hired a consultant, I should say. Um, I think I have to that again. He, uh, it's a gentleman who was a mentor of mine too, uh, when in my early 20s as well. And his name is Joe Stumpf. And he doesn't do a lot these days but he still is an amazing mentor for all of us as real estate agents for some of us that don't like to door knock and cold call and buy leads he has a system called buy referral only and there's a very good system you can purchase and read and there's hundreds of tips and tricks on how to be a good referral agent and not have to physically go out and prospect more and more about getting referrals like coming to you. Very similar to Buffini. You can get daily. So here's that form he's talking about. 
with a little bit of common sense, you can search his name and the seven layer deep and you'll find that video and the links and all that. Uh, if I was more prepared, I'd email it to the whole company before. Um, there you go. Um, so I did mine with a business partner of mine and uh, I've done it several times in this particular setting. I don't want to go through it like I usually do because I don't want to cry for 10 minutes and embarrass myself in front of the sun. Um, but it is very emotional. You can't do this without crying. Unless, unless you really don't really be honest with yourself and get in touch with yourself, it's kind of really hard. But the reality is, is by the time you're done with this, you're a mess. But it's good. You feel like the weight of the world is lifted off your shoulders and you can be honest with yourself and, and kind of go through it that way. Um, so the, uh, my last three, you know, uh, my, my thing was I wanted, I wanted so much more for my parents. I felt they deserved a lot more. And then it goes, you know, I still want to change my mother's life because she's still alive. And then it goes to, I never, <sighs> damn it. Ah. Um, them, I never want to feel the pain that I did growing up. And then nobody will ever hurt again. If I say so, <laughs> say something bad. Don't cry or maybe cry. Hey, <laughs> <I didn't laughs> done it. So yeah, oh, see what I mean? Sorry. So there's reasons we all have our weird things and our family problems and this and that. But at the end of the day, we all have a why. So when I go like, hmm, maybe I should take another month off. No, I think about the things that I have to do for my family and to make a difference. Did, I, did we go too fast for that? Did that make enough sense to where you got it? Okay. <clears throat> so when we talk about prioritizing, these, there's, there's a, only a few things in our real estate business that are very inexpensive. And we already talked about the group today for the, the board for the Antelope Valley. But if you spent any amount of time in the Facebook groups, and just the three that I show you, you always spend, you're always motivated. You know, we talk about an hour a day of mm -hmm. prospecting or a self-help skill set rather. We'll talk about it later, but uh, apparently I did this for a webinar or something and put these in here. <laughs> so, but we should, if you're not part of them, make sure you are. And then there's some new people in here that need to be. So the Club Wealth Real Estate Agent Mastermind and the Stark and Home Smart 10 Week Social Media Series, like crucial groups to be involved in. Even if one or two posts a week really grab your attention and change your career, then that's free training, right? Um, I learned uh, yesterday, we did, did anybody catch the Facebook Live I did with Tristan Nahumata from Club Wealth and our, um, Lab Coats? Yeah. There was a few things in his follow-up plan that I learned that we need to change um, that were important. And these are, these are things, so right now, uh, I'll give you an example. Our leads, about one out of 20, are producing a lead, our online leads. It used to be one out of 10, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I just saw a post this morning, and I don't remember the exact numbers, but 32% of the real estate agents, uh, the public saying they weren't getting a call back from their real estate agent, and I do remember the exact numbers because I have that kind of memory, <laughs> versus last year, First American did this survey, and uh, last year it was 47% of the public didn't get a call back when they called a real estate agent. Wow. A wow. pretty big improvement, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so my thought is, okay, if all these real estate agents are learning that online leads are important, they're starting to take more action. People are building more teams, they're spending more money. There's a lot of shift going on in the real estate industry. Mm -hmm. um, but because of these groups, I learned something that might take us to the next level. Mm. Catch my drift? Yay. Okay. So spend a lot of time in the Facebook groups because there's so much, so much value there. It's ridiculous. Of course, Martha's podcast and the Social Life podcast. There's, there's these calls I'm getting every week still. We need more help with social media. I need more help with social media on um, the Social Life podcast. Uh, maybe Martha would be um, cool doing a podcast with us or something. She seems to know a lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot. Uh, those types of things. So pay attention to the podcast. And, and we, we don't point just these out, but these were the paid advertisers of this class, right? But the, the reality is there's so many others. And, and I was surprised this morning when I saw Julie, she posted the Curator Water Cooler podcast. That was a podcast that the guys from Curator did, which I used to go to uh, Paseo and I'd get on the stairs, right? And I'd listen to the podcast and then I'd flip between that and Evernote and I'd write down you know, page after page after page of notes from one podcast. And I'm like, man, this is some really good learning. And they probably have a couple hundred episodes on there, I'm not sure. But again, if you're looking for a boost or that motivation, 
these are the types of places to get it. You know, there's the real estate rock stars from Pat Hyben. Uh, there's quite a few of those. And these are, the, these are the things that we really need to focus on to go to the next level. <clears throat> so what I want you guys to do too is really focus on your presentations right now. There was a post in Lab Cook this morning um, that said, this, this girl posted, and hopefully some of you saw it, and said, uh, I talked to a lady who has a $1.5 million house, and she said, I always have three or four people come over to give me a price. You can be first. What should I do? Mm. Mm crap right i mean hopefully if you've ever gotten a call like that you feel when i just said that you just went oh shoot. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean i heard you mm -hmm. straight out I mean, that's right. that's a terrible call to get right or mm -hmm. to have mm -hmm. but lucky enough i was able to put our podcast link in there for her and and she'll learn from that if she pays attention and watches it she'll learn how to how to go get a 1.5 million dollar listing and not have to give the price. That's an important, powerful podcast. So, mm -hmm. so that's why I want to. That's why I want to talk to you about your presentations as well. The presentations make a difference when you're there. Now, I like Tristan. What he said yesterday when I was talking to him live, he said three or four of the five times he doesn't have to open his presentation. Mm -hmm. But the confidence that you have, knowing that it's in your laptop or in your iPad is really different. Confidence is half the battle when you're at a listening <coughs> appointment. Many of us get very nervous and we get butterflies in our stomach and I'll be honest, I do too. Sometimes I feel like throwing up when I go to the door still. Mm -hmm. And I've listed thousands of homes. <coughs> but that means a couple things. You still care about your job, you're still passionate about it, and, but you really wanna make a good impression. And, and if I didn't have those tools in my bag, I probably would just go, I don't get back in the car and <laughs> say forget it. Because it does, it's, it's nerve wracking. But knowing I have the industry's best listing presentation saved on my laptop, I can go, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, one of the benefits of working with Team Bjorkman and HomeSmart, I can walk you through those six steps that mean everything when selling your home. I can guarantee you no other agent will work as hard to try to get you a higher price in the quickest amount of time. Do you want to spend the 10, 15 minutes necessary for me to really show you what the difference between real estate agents are? And they go, yeah, or they go, no, I think what you just said summed it up. You know, and you're just like, yeah, see, I have it. But if you don't really have anything and you're winging it, what do you normally pull out at a listing presentation? CMA. CMA. Mm -hmm. And what's the one thing that's going to make you get out the door faster than ever? CMA. You're going to tell them a price, $50,000 less than they want to hear, and they're going to boot your ass out, mm -hmm. and they're going to list with somebody else. Yep. It's the reality. And any of us who've gone on a listing appointment and we've lost it and really didn't know why, that's why. Because we have to go in, we're on the same team with them, right? Mm -hmm. But they just naturally want to fight with you. Because they know you're going to come and try to shoot holes in their dreams of making an extra 50 grand. Because they're convinced that 50 grand will pay for your college education, right? And they're just like, oh no. And you come in, the big bad realtor, tell them they need to clean their carpet, pick up the dog poop, and by the way, your house sucks and it's worth 50 grand less than you think. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happens. But if you have the presentation, the ability to present it, you can walk in there powerfully and confident and get through that meeting like it's nothing. So as we go through our year and as we finish up our fourth quarter, like whatever we're doing today is talking Christmas presents, right? Mm -hmm. This is our last chance. Whatever you guys go away from here doing, our last chance to have something really bitching for Christmas. Is anybody going on a really dynamic vacation or anything for Christmas? No? Okay, well, I always think about that about this time, and, and Andy knows in my house right now we're having a pretty big fight over which country we're going to. <laughs> because nice fight to have. we normally go to Mexico, right? Now my wife's like, oh, we're going to get our heads cut off. All right, so now where are we going to go? Well, we were going to go to the Caribbean. Well, now that's blown off the freaking hemisphere. <laughs> so now where are we going to go? Are we going to go to Hawaii. Europe? Are we going to go to Hawaii? We just got back. So, oh. so but yeah. those are the types of things I'm talking about. Those are So I'm like thinking today going, well, whatever it is I can tell this chick has a lot of money in her mind being spent right yeah. more helicopters more this oh, yeah. <laughs> I better do something really powerful for Christmas because the last thing you want to do is go do I want to buy Christmas presents or run up my credit cards on airfare you know you want to say both eh, do both right <laughs> so the, the point I'm trying to make powerfully again is whatever you do today is going to greatly impact your family's Christmas right yes Laura do you want to be first or last on the listing appointment when they're going to interview multiple That's a great question. Does anybody want to answer that for her? Last. First. Last. 
Okay, why last? <clears throat> I'd like to be last because with I know the power of my listing presentation and the unique things that our team does that other teams just don't do. And with that, now that they've already seen what lacks with all the other agents, I'll be able to seal the deal right then and there instead of come first and show them how great we are and then have them see how lacking all the other agents are to have to follow up. So by coming last, they can see, wow, this agent didn't do that. They don't have this. And by all, and then of course I'll capitalize on that, just read their body language as it's happening, and then you just seal the deal right there. You'd be done with it. <coughs> yeah, Gina. Challenge flag on that. Go. What if Mike goes in first and just nails it? Yeah, that's I guarantee right. you're not calling anybody else. Yeah. So I was gonna let that finish up. So the answer, <laughs> John, go ahead. Yeah, I like to be in there first because if I can have a power presentation, a lot of the, uh, if the sellers are set point for two or three other agents, like I've done a lot of expires before, and one of the things the sellers hate to do is disappoint somebody else that you made an appointment for. And so I tell them, I've learned this many times, and let me be the bad guy and let them know that you listen to me and you can bring the buyer to, before it hits the market. So that's how I, I would approach it. Right, and, and, that's, and if you guys didn't hear that, <clears throat> the idea, which I do all the time, is go into the property they let me cancel those appointments for you <laughs> and I will make sure they feel loved enough to want to bring their buyers to the property mm -hmm. and we do it all the time mm -hmm. so typically last I like to go in first but if I do go in first I still don't have to talk about price like that girl said and that's the point I want to make right now I can say here is our listing presentation this is all the wonderful things we do and they'll say how much do you think I should list my house for and it's very simple mr. And mrs. Smith I'm sure you have had or will have two or three agents to come through with black and white paper. They'll lay it down and pinpoint about what your house is worth. I'm sure you'll agree it's way too important for me to guess at, so let me do the right thing. Go ahead, interview the other agents. You've seen the listing presentation. I want you to promise two things before I leave. Number one, don't sign a thing with another agent because of something you've heard. Maybe it's something we've overlooked or there maybe there's a reason we don't do that. Sometimes agents do things to help other neighbors get higher prices than you. I don't want to see that happen. The second thing is I want to make sure and be able to go over true appraisal with you. Because many times, sellers will leave money on the table. And it breaks my heart because an agent might come in and cut their commission or some other really bad thing like that. And they will come in and you will leave maybe tens of thousands of dollars on the table. Wouldn't it be nice to know that you had a true professional that's, uh, um, that's been in the business a long time help you make that decision? You see, it's my job to flood you with that information for you to make that decision. There's no real estate agent anywhere in this country that can walk in and say your house is worth this much because you have different things about this house, don't you? Yep. And you know there's different things about your location or possibly your neighborhood that other agents might know, right? Do you understand why I asked you to promise those two things? Do I have your word on that? Out. Yeah, pulling right. my heartstrings. <laughs> <laughs> but those are the types of things you can say. So there's many theories and there's many opinions to that, but in general, I'd like to be last. I really would. Here's what happens. You go, you're the third agent in, the people are like, oh my God, okay, you're gonna do another open house. You're all the same idiots, where do I sign? <laughs> and you get to get the listing because you're the last agent. But if you do get something, somebody dynamic before you, you're screwed. And that's the best thing in the world. Hi, it's Mike Bjorkman. Yeah, I'm sitting over here on 123 Cherry Street. Yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Smith have asked me to cancel your appointment. But don't worry, we still want you to bring all your buyers. <laughs> and feel free to market any of my marketing to help you do so. Mm -hmm. Great, okay, bye. <laughs> what happens after that? The they stabbed your little voodoo doll. Five <laughs> seconds later, the seller's phone rings. Yeah. Did you really have Mike Bjorkman? Yeah. yeah. It happened three times in a row not too long ago. So <laughs> okay, so a lot of people in this room don't have a proper buyer presentation. Now, HomeSmart luckily has a proper buyer presentation for you. You pull it out, extract it out of the listing presentation and customize that. But that is the thing that's so mind-blowing. So. My wife heard me on the phone first. Somebody called from Nashville, Tennessee last night to refer us a buyer. Apparently this person is working with somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, driving them around circles, showing them wrong areas, and who knows what. But my wife sitting there goes, you have no idea. <laughs> Remember you walked by, that was so funny. 
You have no idea what my husband and his team does different to find homes that aren't even on the market yet. Oh yeah, they've exhausted the market. They've seen everything on Zillow and Julio and Milio and all those other things. It's so funny. So she get kind of closed the deal and then said, here's his number. And that's when Andy walked by. He's all 476 trying to give her his number. <laughs> 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 and, and, and it was like it was good to see your son hungry like that, right? And I'm cracking up. I'm on. She's on speaker, and I'm trying not to laugh because I don't want her to know because she's trying to get off the phone to go to a meeting. And, and I'm trying not to laugh, and then I get to hear him cracking up in the kitchen, going, I'm on, I'm, "That's my boy right there." Yeah. All right. So we shouldn't move too far past this. And so, um, if you struggle on what to tell a buyer and what to put in this presentation. Martha, what podcast should we listen to? <laughs> there's, there's two podcasts. There's called, one called Buyer Loyalty, right? We just did that one. And there's another one in there, um, The 10 Best Ways to Get Buyers. Both of those podcasts have different things in them that will help you put this presentation together above and beyond the Home Smart presentation. So the Home Smart presentation is really good to walk you through all the six steps. And then there's parts in there where you put your marketing plan to blow other agents away. Um, also, also on our YouTube channel, the Home Smart NCG with no space YouTube channel, uh, Johnny and Lindsay helped me do a buyer presentation that actually went through a complete buyer presentation, and I actually put them on a buyer broker agreement, and that was a, a it was funny but actually a very powerful one too. For some reason, everything flowed that day, and it just everything came out of my mouth so beautifully that it was all recorded. <laughs> uh, thank God. <laughs> all right. Uh, so let's plan to stay motivated, and this is super important. If you guys screw this part up in real estate, you don't really have a chance in this business. I'll tell you that right now. We can watch so many podcasts and YouTube things, but we have to go to an event every 90 days, right? Our team is going to sync in Vegas in October, and then in November, we're gonna to go to the BSM, Business Strategy Mastermind with Helixon. We're moving and grooving and we're doing things. When you get in a room full of hundreds, if not thousands of people, of like-minded people, all going for the same goal, mm -hmm. it's powerful, it's motivating. And the reason I say every 90 days is I don't know why, to be honest with you. It takes 90 days to make a habit. I feel it takes 90 days to break a habit. Mm -hmm. um, and once we start losing the motivation, like if we go to a Tony Robbins event, we're motivated for a good long time, right? And these are 90 day cycles that I've had and most people have. So if you go to another one every 90 days, you really get that boost. And you're like, the boost we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So so you need to go to an event. I do. Right? And it's like, Sometimes you guys see me up here every week, you're like, blah, if I hear him say one more stupid joke, I'll throw up, and, <laughs> and I'm gonna listen to your effing podcast, and ah. so go get other opinions, and like, John, where did you learn that script that I use? I don't even remember where I learned it, but I'm sure it was events, right? I mean, it was a, yeah, it was Jerry Bresser, maybe? Yeah, Jerry Bresser, if you don't, have, God, if you guys have a chance to see him, he's one of the very best expired and for sell by owner trainers on the planet. I would, I would What's be so, name? Jerry Bresser. B-R-E-S-S-E-R, -S -S -E something like that. Right. He's amazing, and he teaches like the same style as I do as far as you know, get the commitment before price and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be like an old Mike Ferry thing. Like if, if some people hate Mike Ferry, it doesn't matter. Go to the event, there's 4,000 people in a room mm -hmm. that are pumped up. Like it's, if you haven't been, it's just like a Tony Robbins event. These freaking idiots are on their chairs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Hugging people that they look like, I'm like, oh my god, and, and your ego goes away, and you just have a blast, and you're and you're you're internally changed, and that's that's why people spend thousands and thousands of dollars to go see those motivational speakers because it works, it does, and and, and I'm always the guy that goes, oh, I can keep myself motivated, but I really can't. Uh, one book a month, right? Quiet time, got to read a book a month. Yes, that's that's just kind of if you don't do nothing else, but. Technically, you could probably burn through one every couple weeks. Um, again, hiking, treadmill, that kind of stuff. Uh, if, unless you read, like, paper. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about the podcast. Um, network groups, we talked a little bit about Billy CMA Network Group. There's uh, AG Network Group. There's, there's network groups all over the place, right? Martha, you have some good ones in the Valley, right? What are the NAR rep, ARIA? Women's Council of Realtors. If you, if you 
you're a woman, you should probably seriously yeah. consider that. I think that's empowering. I used to do the do, be the dude that did the flag salute there. Okay, girls, hand over your hearts. You did more than that. <laughs> yeah. And so it was kind of fun to do that. So these network groups, um, even if you don't find a listing, it's still motivating. You still get to shake hands with cool people and, and just, Again, it's, it's, we're real estate agents, right? I mean, we're the weirdest, oddest group on the planet. And sometimes we feel so isolated and so different from anybody else. Everybody's like, oh, I'm going to work. You're like, oh, I don't know what to do today. And, you know, and, but, but, but you're driving a Mercedes. You don't know what you're doing today? Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's, just, it's just better to hang out with other people that understand you know, your problem. Not that that's a problem. But, all right. Um, spend 20 minutes daily with Facebook. We talked about that with the groups. Um, find role play partners. Does anybody role play in here? Okay, that Billy does. Like. <laughs> One, two people. So, so, <laughs> what? Other than oh. that. Oh. Did I just say? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Other than that. <laughs> Which, should we start a group for you for others? Yes. Okay. <laughs> but, but, that's, <laughs> but that's a real thing. When you role play with people that can give you objections back, it's powerful too. Because now you're building the confidence. Sometimes people say, man, the crap that flows out of your mouth is amazing. Yeah, that's because I've talked to hundreds if not thousands of people for hours a month ever since I was 18 years old. So sometimes if something comes out of my mouth that sounds rehearsed, because it is, mm -hmm. it is. It's from role playing with people. So a few tips on this. Mike Ferry's got a great blog on role play partners. Get a new role play partner, have several, right? Two mm -hmm. or three. Mm -hmm. Get a new one every 30 days. Because after 30 days, you've heard the same crap out of their mouth and they've, mm -hmm. you know, vice versa. You need to find somebody new. Now, when you go to these events we're talking about, this is where you meet these people. Find somebody better than you, it's had, but not much. That's what I recommend. If you find somebody so much better than you, you bring no value to them and they will, they just won't show up on the next call. And you're like, hey, Maxie, what happened, dude? They're like, oh, I was busy, sorry. And basically they said, you suck at role playing, it's a waste of my time. <laughs> so as you gradually get better, that's how you graduate with role play partners. And have it pre-planned, right? So have, these, have a list of scripts that you wanna go over, have a list of scripts that they wanna go over, and you don't say, hey Johnny, how are you today? Oh man, I heard there was a hurricane come through town. No, F that. Hey, this is Mike Bjork with HomeSmart. I noticed your home's not on the market anymore. You know, those are the times you jump right into role play. 15, 20 minutes is all you need. Hang up, go to work, right? Part of your hour a day of skill set. But that's motivating, because when you learn those new scripts and you do it often, you're like, Bring it, just bring it at me. I mean, sometimes like, and, and God bless Tammy, she's not here right now. Um, <laughs> like last year we did the listing boot camp in Vegas and I heard she was gonna go up. What was that contest that was like the? Commission? Uh, well, there was a Objection handling contest, right? There's hundreds of people in that room. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm not there for her. I'm like, she I, nailed it. Yeah, and I'm like, wait a minute, I taught her. She's fine, right? She's up there in Vegas and I'm like, I don't even, I was in a different seminar somewhere else and I'm like watching Facebook going, oh my God, did she win? And she won and I knew it and I said, that is what I'm talking about. Uh, That's, up against Tristan. Yeah, I went up against Tristan Ahumada. Oh he thinks he God. knows what to say and she smoked his ass. So I'm all proud. <laughs> so those are, the types of, those are the types of things that's proof in the pudding, right? And then when, when, when somebody lists with you, you don't have to say, well, I wonder why they picked me. Because I knew what I was saying. I was confident and I delivered a great presentation. So role play partners, what else we got? Me. I would not mind being your mentor. I did not sign up for this job to ignore you guys and to never hear from you, okay? Even if you're on a team, call me every 30 days. Write down three or four thoughts that you have in your mind. What do you wanna work on? What do you wanna do? How did you get through this, Mike? Who can I, also, can I talk to you that might be different than you, a different personality? Or maybe I'm here in my life and I wanna be here. All those things, I'm here for you, right? I've been a psychiatrist for thousands of clients, yeah. and now I'm totally qualified to help you guys. <laughs> <laughs> same job, same job. Yeah. And if I can't, I know people that can help you, right? And, and I probably talked to so many people that say, you know what, I might be the, not be the best for you, because let's face it, sometimes you're not as aggressive as me, and I might tell someone to F off, and you might say, I don't want to use that approach. So I'll say, here. Talk to Lisa, she knows, she knows exactly how to get through that. And then you can say, okay, cool, because again, you might be sick of hearing from me, but at least I can help you and guide you in the right direction, you know? And it's funny how that comes up. 
Dresser. I mean, who would have thought of that today? I, it wasn't on my mind, but maybe somebody sitting in here says, I really want to work on for sale by owners. And now you just got to write something down. So talking to mentorship people is very important. Any questions on that? Did you raise your hand? Okay. All right. Uh, webinar week. I like webinars. I do. They're, they get on, get on their list. Um, do you know, do you guys know the real purpose of a webinar besides mine? Sell you something after. Sell you something, okay? So we talk about infomercials a lot, which is my favorite. I'll actually record on the DVR. Um, but you should watch webinars every week. And there's tons of them. And once you get on this list, they sell your email to somebody else. And now you're getting, getting on webinar lists and you go, what? Uh, wow. <laughs> but watch them. And when I say watch a webinar, I don't mean do 40 things at once and work on your file and all that stuff. <coughs> you shut everything down and watch it and learn. Because probably what they're trying to sell you, you need, first of all. They wouldn't be selling it if it wasn't needed in our industry. And number two, how are they closing you? Because if you can get closed that way, possibly an owner or a buyer could get closed a very similar way. And, it, and that sounds cheesy, right? Does that sound a little mm -hmm. funny to say? Mm -hmm. But in reality, if you don't close, do you get paid? No. no. So think of a word that makes you feel warm and fuzzy, like getting a signature or something. Think of a different word besides close and use that in your mind because reality is if you just went to a listing appointment and said, okay, I'm done. Thanks for your time. I walked out the door. You waste the time, right? And sometimes the seller will watch you go, oh, wait, I wanted to list with you. But no, you got to close. Hey, Mr. <coughs> Smith, you ready to sign the agreement so I can get going on my pre-marketing campaign? The faster I do, the more money I can get you ready. And they're like, oh, okay, where do I sign? You know, but if you don't ask questions like that, nothing happens. And, and, I, and I've been on listing appointments and I've seen recordings and, and I see the end of them. So what do you think about that? They go, we think that's really cool. And then the, then the agent doesn't do anything and they're like, well, we'll call you. And he's like, no, they're right there. Just take it. So... Watch webinars. Wednesday or Thursday training? Here's Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. Some of you, it's your first time here. I hope you're enjoying it and it's not your last uh, because we do go through the curriculum a lot. And there's probably 40 to 50 ones that we go through a year that are different and we hardly ever go to the same one. All right, this is the one I hate to talk about. Mm -hmm. In order to change, in order to go to that country, wherever it is in Christmas, the CRM. Here's what I know. I talk to you guys individually a lot, and I know a lot of you say we're gonna work on our CRM and never do. And I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hands because you're all liars. No. So I know. <laughs> <laughs> but this is serious. My number one regret in all of my business is the way I treated my CRM. When you see Tammy or Jolina going through my CRM and trying to figure it out, it's a disaster, and everybody's mad at me. <laughs> and it's just a big disaster because there's people that are rated one, twos, and threes. There's people are rated A, Bs, and Cs. There's chamber lists, there's via lists, there's all kinds of lists that I've uploaded. I've bought lists and, there's, and they're just bad and I've hired teammates and I let them do weird stuff. And you go into this and you're just like, how about we just <coughs> delete this? But can we? It's 26 years of past clients, you can't. So then they go, okay, Mike, let's go through this, okay? And they'll be all, Apple, first one, no clue. <laughs> Brings this, no clue. So then it's more frustrating. Well, you sold them a house in 2001. Do you know how long ago that was? I don't know who that is. You know, so now we have the CRM that's just a big disaster. So now we're down to, well, let's just email the whole group and see who unsubscribes. That's not the way to have a CRM, right? Mm -hmm. What I do know is how Facebook kind of is my CRM now, which is bad for me to say, do as I say, not as I do. But I, I feel like I have a better connection with people because I watch them and I go, oh, that's who that person is. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I get that. I remember that. And I see how I can use Facebook as a CRM and I talk to them a few times a year, a few times a quarter, and I start get business and referrals. I'm like, man, if I only had those thousands of clients properly organized, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even need to do anything. Legit, sit in my underwear on my couch, call past clients and ask for referrals. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's the easiest thing on earth you could ever do. Right? Kim, mm -hmm. have I ever called you as a past client and said, hey, how's it going? You might have gotten a Facebook message, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> half of you guys are past clients, but, but the, the reality is, I just can't explain how powerful this is. I don't care which one. Use the HomeSmart one to begin with. 
Mm -hmm. If you want, if you don't have one, play with it, figure it out. Once you start to be a CRM baller, start exporting to bigger, better CRMs. I don't know what else I'm babbling about here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> All right, so our daily schedule. Most of you know it by heart. The ones that don't, you should. Um, you can get this perfect daily schedule on the clubwealth.com blog. All those guys are dying to give you a copy of it. Um, and it's, this is the realtor's life, right? So she asked on the video Wednesday, let's talk about our, what our day looks like. And we have to go back to the podcast. We have to go back to this training because again, it takes 90 days to create a habit and 90 days to fall off of a habit. And even myself, the other day, I caught myself so far off my, my perfect daily schedule that I, I felt so guilty. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I was even leaving town the next day on a trip and I'm like, I should cancel the trip. I should punish myself for going off my schedule because that could greatly affect my uh, financial future. So it, it, it is what it is. It's just super simple. Two hours a day. You guys, two hours a day of prospecting, mm -hmm. it's easy. Mm -hmm. If you went to your normal corporate nine to five job, does anybody remember what those feel like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're terrible. Horrible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I look back, and some of you guys don't know, I worked at LensCrafters. I opened the one at the mall here. I was, I was headhunted by them, and they gave me this big, cushy corporate job. And I look back, and I'm still, like, scarred to this day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, take an 18-year-old kid, put him in a corporate environment in the mall at 9 o'clock on a Saturday night, and I'm taking out trash. <coughs> Picture that. 18 years old, taking out trash. And, and, and I had no choice. I had to be there. I couldn't leave <clears throat> if I wanted my paycheck or if I wanted these amazing benefits or whatever the crap they just suck you in with and handcuff you to the wall with. Um, <laughs> so I looked back and I said, if all I had to do was make crappy glasses for two hours, like, and, and I, would, I would gladly do it, right? So prospecting isn't that bad. I guess what I'm trying to do is anchor you with something in your past that feels bad. Think of something crappy you did at your job and go, I hate this. And it's probably the reason you might be sitting here because I didn't <laughs> like doing that. God, it's so hard to filter myself. Stuff. <laughs> and, you, and you think of that and you go, should I go back to doing that or should I pick up the phone and call people that actually want to talk to me? Because mm -hmm. they do want to talk mm -hmm. to you. Oh, yeah. They do. I mean, if you're not totally cold calling somebody at midnight, they want to talk to you. Um, <laughs> but the previewing property, and I got to... I have a story to tell about that. There is a, a certain buyer that my team is working with right now. And I didn't, I didn't need to say who, but this person I've asked to diligently preview property and has done it. And they picked an area the other day that I said, and this is what I'm telling you, pick an area you don't know every day and go preview property in that area. Well, the other day they picked an area that I was like, hey, that's a pretty good area. I don't even really know much about that. Go check it out. So I got a referral from an agent down in Santa Monica or Malibu, something like that. And they said, I'm looking for a person and they want to work in this area. And I said, no kidding. I have just the right agent because they worked in that area. And if I thought about it in this entire room, I'd go, I don't know who I would refer that person to because they, I don't know if they know that area or not, mm -hmm. you know, and that's bad. Uh, Previewing property creates such confidence in your ability to work with buyers. It's very similar to that listing tangent we went on, which was fun, right? <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, when you talk to a buyer, and you guys know, so again, for the new people in here, our YouTube channel, the Home Smart NCG with no spaces, has my top five buyer conversion scripts that you can watch and listen to over and over, write them down, role play them with your role play partners. Um, but they're good to say. I mean, it's it's pretty powerful when you can say, I know of three homes right now that no other agent can tell you about. Would you want me to show this to you? And they're like, hmm, okay. Nobody else has told me that. And if you do this, what I'm saying, previewing property all day and your network groups and all that, you have that list and you know it in your head. Even if it's one, could that make the difference? Yep. Right? You're looking for RV? Oh, I know a house that's getting painted and new carpet put in, but it'll be on the market next week. Would you like to go see if we can get in a little smudgerly? You get there, you bond with them. Now they're your eight. Now they're, they're your, they are your clients. It just takes. Don't give one. them the address. <laughs> <laughs> it just takes one, right? I mean, so so actually, if you know those scripts and you know the um, if you know your inventory, that makes a big difference. 
It really does. And I'll tell you one other story that it's not a story, but it's something that I've noticed in my career. And and I have conversations with people because I previewed property two hours a day when I'm at an event or if I'm out on the streets talking to somebody and I always ask, where do you live, right? Ford, family, occupation, recreation, <laughs> dreams. That's what we talk to people about. And I say, where do you live? And they say, oh, I live in North Valencia. What street? Mm -hmm. Here's the street. I go, oh my gosh, I love that street. I sold the one around the corner. I was, I was driving by the other day. I saw the real pretty green one with the two stories on the market. And they're just like, wow, you really know my neighborhood. When, I go, when I'm going to sell or refer somebody who wants to buy in my neighborhood, I'm going to think of you. And they do. And it's happened over <coughs> and over and over. And I always walk away from those scenarios. Now that I'm a trainer, it's, it's really fun to talk about. But, be, be, but when I'd walk away before, I'd just walk away and just think, I just killed whoever else they were thinking of interviewing before they talked to me. And when you know those neighborhoods so intimately, especially new construction and Melarus and mm -hmm. school bonds and you can really talk intelligently, they're freaking floored. They're blown away. And you think, oh, previewing property today isn't as important as working on that file. Look, like one hour a day only, that's how important that is. Mm -hmm. um, and you go, I'll do that tomorrow and then tomorrow never comes, right? We've always wanted to go see that one patch of new construction across town. It's been open for like three months now. It's sold out and you still haven't gone. Do we know that one? Anybody? Yeah. Again, liars. I mean, <laughs> I have my own couple of those. I know. Um, I swear I'm going to go do that. Uh, <laughs> but there are those instances where it makes a difference. And it's almost all of the incidences. It really is. Because if you're talking to somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about, it's not fun. You don't want to buy through them. You don't want to do business with them. Mm -hmm. It's just the same. I mean, okay, so I don't want to go on that rant for too much longer because there's always next week to do it again, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. As long as you guys know the difference between prospecting and follow-up. Follow-up is people that you've already got leads from. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to work with people that want to move in the next 30, 60, 90 days. Hey, you ready? Yes, let's do this. Don't use that script. It never works. Um, <laughs> but that's the idea. So don't get caught up with follow-up as prospecting because that'll hurt you. Um, the one hour a day of file check. Now, if you're new in the business and you have less than five escrows, here's what you need to do. You need to put a big sign in front of your desk saying F follow up or F files, sorry, <laughs> and not touch your files except for one hour a day. If you have over five, you may, if you don't have any assistant or transaction coordinator, you may need an hour. Other than that, I promise you, you don't. They're going to call. The clients are going to call and say, was my termite ordered? You're like, God, I want to call them back. You can't do it. One hour a day. Save all those calls for that time because it'll ruin your day every time. Mm -hmm. As soon as you start getting a deal, basically what you've done is you've gone to Magic Mountain, you've opened the door to get on the real estate roller coaster, and it will take you down. And you think you had a crappy Christmas before? Wait till this Christmas if you start working on your files. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. And you say, but I'm an agent. They're, they really expect me to, to help them with their files. If there's a freaking super fire flame and emergency, go for it. But I'm telling you, 90% of the crap they could care less about, really, they're just excited to be buying or selling a house, and you could figure it out in a couple hours. But until you're previewing your prospect and your follow-up is done and your skill set, right, and your uh, self-help, nothing's as important. Because remember, we're trying to figure out which country we want to go to in Christmas, <laughs> not which job to apply for. <laughs> okay? Mm. Any of this making sense? Mm. Yep. Yeah. And I know I beat you guys, but someday, you know, they, they say they have to, they, the client has to hear your name seven times before they remember who you are. So when you're geographically farming, which we have a great podcast for, that Maria put together for us, or Martha put together for us, um, we have that, <laughs> sorry. So when you send the mailer out, right, and you go, oh, that didn't work, you're like, I'm really going to hit it hard. I sent four mailers out in 30 days, and I got no phone calls. Yeah, because statistically we prove it takes about five to seven times. So they're not going to remember your name. So if I can beat this schedule into your head seven times, maybe it'll do something similar. Mm -hmm. That's the point I was going for. Boy, I just drag crap out sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. Oh, then appointments. Now, people say, what if I had a listing appointment? When do I do that? Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay to work more than eight hours a day once in a while. If you have that listing appointment, go ahead and do it. And if you had to juggle a couple of these things, it's okay. Just get back on schedule. If you didn't prospect one day, prospect for the next. 
If you didn't preview two hours, prospect for the next. If you had to cram up and do self-help and skill set at six in the morning instead of 9.30 when you're used to getting up and having breakfast, try that, right? Those types of things are optional and flexible. We have probably 12 to 14 hours a day of good usable time. And this is only eight hours. I mean, we can do it. So especially if you're serious about going to the next level. Ready? Did you just add that up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 All right. Trust but verify. So what time is it? Are we cool? Yeah. All right. So what I want to do is talk about our, our co-marketing partners. Co-marketing partners are fun. They're motivating. They're all ready to do what you want to do. Billy would probably love to do something with you in your business. He would probably love to spend an hour with you to get to know you a little bit more. Meanwhile, you're learning together, helping together, possibly at a meeting together. The Skyline lenders in the room, raise your hands, where are you? Okay, there's good old Scott right there. I'm sure Scott would love to spend an hour with you and go over what he knows about his CRM follow-up. I happen to know Scott's pretty good with CRM, so you might want to turn around and say, hey, do you want to help me with CRM? Yeah. Those are the types of partners I'm talking about. Now, there's co-marketing strategies with budgets and goals and all sorts of stuff. There are people that will co-market with you. I know First American, Dawn has lovely door hangers and the bags to even do it with, and I'm sure she'd love to go on a walk with you. And, Hit the other side of the street. Well, not me, she's Okay, Don's sister, she likes to walk a little bit more. A little bit. <laughs> I see that chick walking all over town. I'm like, what? Honk your horn and wave. Her and Joe have a good deal, one of their names. They have a deal going. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I'm, not, I'm trying not to hit them. Uh, so, insurance agents. So, think about this. If you don't want to um, hang out with another realtor and go over your deepest, darkest secrets, because I know how realtors are. I don't want to tell them what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. They're going to copy me. Like yeah. Andy like does videos all the time, right? For He does uh, drone and interior videos. He's got agents that go, do my video, but don't show this one to your dad. And, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't, I swear. But, uh, <clears throat> like I'm going to steal the ideas, right? <laughs> but, <they're>, but, <laughs> but sometimes I know how agents are like that, but these other people want to benefit mutually off relationships. So we talk about getting that boost, find a really super educated uh, lender that wants to have fun with you and, and strategize and talk about marketing and what other people have learned and that type of stuff, insurance, all these guys. You guys get the point, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't try to be the, the lone ranger. Because you can only go to so many network groups before you're sick of them like me. And now you need to go out to somebody else. And your vendors, so I can't tell you how many of our smart partners, I gotta stop saying vendors, have referred or used us for business in the past. Right? There's an agent at this company that over half their business came from their partners that way. Which is powerful, right? If you're gonna do a lot of business. Uh, so they're people too. When they call you, don't say, oh no, it's another dang lender. No, these people could refer, could buy or sell. They have neighbors too. They still go to football games with their kids and sit on the bleachers and talk to people. Remember who you're talking with and who you're dealing with. And maybe one person might not want to do what you want to do. Door knock, open houses, those types of things, but another might. Right? It's okay to have multiple relationships based on your co-marketing strategy. I'm trying not to look at Skyline. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, only you, Scott. <laughs> um, all right, can you guys think of other ones? I'm sure you can, it's not hard. There's a lot of people that rely on us for business and mm -hmm. we rely on them. Oh, shoot, maintenance. All right, so the question I always get at the end of this is, oh my God, there's so much, Mike, mm -hmm. what should I do? Pick three, pick four at the most, focus on those. If you're gonna be an open house killer, do an open house, uh, do it right, right? Focus all day, every day on open houses. You guys probably, some of well, the new people haven't heard. When I used to be a for sale by owner agent, I'd get the listing every time because I focused and watched my competition and I learned and did what I needed to do to be the best for sale by owner agent on the planet. Nobody could touch me. Same with expireds. If I wanted an expired listing, I knew it was mine. If I wanted a buyer, I knew it was mine because I focused on three at a time mastered them and then went out and implemented what I've learned and just kept building and building and building. Same with you. Talking this morning and cold calling then and then I want to work on expires, then I'm going to work on bankruptcies, and then I'm going to work on divorce attorneys. At some point you're just like, I've done a lot, but I haven't done anything with any 
you know, you're not authentic about it. You just kind of reached out and did it. And it's kind of like me with golf, right? I'm never, <laughs> never going to get good. I don't take it seriously. I like to do it once in a while, but it's, you just, you're never going to master it. I can't get the ball. To the right. Ball. So when somebody says, Mike, how would you like to go out for a thousand bucks and play around a round of golf? I say, no. I haven't mastered that. I'm not going to go bet you a grand on something I know I'm going to lose. There's no way. Because that is kind of like if, if there's three people mastering something and then you, it doesn't make sense, right? So it's kind of like me going up against three powerful listing agents that practice the presentation, role play every day, go to seminars, go to events. It doesn't make sense to go up against those agents, right? Unless you're ready to go up against those agents. And then after a few times of getting your face rammed in the mud, what happens? <coughs> you try to go somewhere where it's not raining. <laughs> so translation, that means you start to gradually get out of the business. Well, maybe I'd make a better lender. Maybe new construction's better for me. You know, maybe a TC is really where I should be. Mm -mm. You just gotta follow what we're talking about and you'll always be okay. And no offense to whatever I just said. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with any of that. <laughs> but that's the reality. We start thinking maybe, maybe is there anybody who maybe kind of wavered that way before mm -hmm. or yep. got out of the business and got back in after they go oh wow that was stupid to go see why do I ask you just, you know, I swear I never thought of being a lender yeah. no? oh, all right the clock oh good all right so let's just go through this real quick too you want to have all this crap whoops what was that yeah Did you get that no all right so have everything ready so we talk about a day two days, three days, get your marketing together, get everything in place, your garb. Look at, where's this freaking awesome girl here? Veronica Dazner just came in with her new koozie because she knows I love koozies and we always end up with each other's koozies. But that was just today, I mean, garb. That's what garb is, marketing. Jennifer, can you still help people with marketing stuff? Raise your hand back there. She can do everything, anything. Just stay away from my Martha. And then, um, you know, your car, get your car together. If I hear one more person saying, I can't put people in my car, it's, I'm embarrassed of it, don't, I don't want to hear it. Go get a new car. It's cheap. It's very cheap. If you do half the crap I say, you can afford the same $100,000 car I have sitting out front. It's simple. It's no big deal. Um, clothes, get your clothes together. Don't ever, do as I, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I'm going to my son's football game. I'm just not going to wear a suit after this. Um, yeah, go hard, see? <laughs> um, your tech. Right? There's there's so many people. There's the, the our, where's Katie? Are you still in here? Poor poor Gus, right? Gus works at California Leasing. He doesn't want to spend the money because he knows it's our money, really. And he's got this computer. And I was like, Do you really need a computer? It took him like I'm not kidding, ten minutes for this old thing to fire up. And <laughs> I didn't even know what programs were on. I'm like, You got to be kidding me, dude. So we went. I got him a brand new MacBook, and he's all dialed now. Uh, we all are gonna get the new iPhone X, right? Yep. No. Yes, you yes. are. Oh. Yes, you are. So those are the types of things. Don't let anything slow you down. Johnny. <laughs> Johnny needs an iPhone. Johnny, what do you have? Samsung. Oh, he makes all of our team B group too. chats green. Or oh, separate. Johnny. Or separate. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's oh. Kick him out the group. It's ridiculous. Trust me. And your petitions have been fine. All right, all right, bring it back in. So let's plan our budget too. We right. have to stick to some sort of budget every month. Mm -hmm. If you're going to say, I'm going to sell two houses a month mm -hmm. out of your 24 grand you're going to bring home, you should probably spend 20 to 30% minimum of that. So now you're going to say, okay, now I know I'm going to take four or five grand a month and that's going just towards my marketing and my business. Mm -hmm. And don't be stupid and say, oh, well, I'll do the next one and I want to go to this country for Christmas. No. That five grand has to go back into your business. And we could talk about that more when we talk about geographical farming and, and just basically marketing budgets. I know every month what my budget's gonna be. And I know every month when it goes over, I get pissed, I have to go sell another house to make up for it. But those are the kinds of cool things that, to where you can turn the faucet on and say, hey, I need an extra 20 grand because I wanna do this big marketing campaign. And you turn your faucet on and you go out and you make an extra couple sales, take your 20 grand, turn your faucet back off and now you can do your campaign. Mm -hmm. right? So those are the kind of cool things to know. And you guys know me, I'm not a numbers guy. I took that daily schedule and said, forget that. I'm just two hours of this, two hours of that, two hours of that. So I'm not a numbers guy. I'm just like a just go do crap guy. Right? <laughs> um, and get your mentor in place. Because 
as we go into 2018, which will go by lightning fast. You know how it's like yeah. Thanksgiving, yeah. all of a sudden yeah. it's like yes. Christmas. You're like, what the hell just happened? New Year's. Right. New Year's and then, so get all this together now and, and get your mentor put in place so you have somebody to talk to. And I can be your mentor, I promise you. Um, come to me, come to whoever you want. Or maybe it's somebody that you uh, spend money on, like a, a normal coach that will give you all those weird numbers and stuff. But have that in place because you're going to need somebody to kind of tap you on the booty, keep you going. As it gets cloudy like me and I get depressed or, or as it starts raining, nobody wants to hear from a real estate agent in the rain. You know, nobody wants to see houses in the rain. Nobody wants to see houses around Thanksgiving. I hear this every year, right? No, yeah, no, we still sold 12 homes last December. So don't tell me your crap about rain and whatever. Um, you know, so the, just get it all together. You guys have questions about this? Is there any boost in there for you? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, because this is kind of a quick prioritize, get your fourth quarter in order, yes. and get ready to roll, even though it's, we're a little past that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this is what we're going to need to just get sailing through the holidays, and then we'll take this and we'll rename it 2018's here. We'll do it again. Right. 90 days, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys need help um, on which events to go to or which trainers to go to, reach out to me. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of them, and they all specialize in different things. You can't just pick one, I promise you. Um, what else? We good?